Okay, we're on. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming along and joining in. Really appreciate it. Um, got a lot to share with you in a short space of time uh, about the challenges and our solution of delivering smart inventory. We call it AI-based, but it makes use of a number of technologies to get to, to the right answer and the right effect. I stand between you and lunch, so I'm going to try and stick to this timing here, because if I don't, things are going to get ugly, I expect. Um, we've put a lot of effort in. I'm hoping that some of my colleagues from Novobi are going to be joining me shortly uh, so that they can support any Q&A, but I'll do my best to uh, handle any of those as well. And we've been a partner with Odoo for some years. We're a software development as well as implementation organization, so we have deep technology roots. Okay, so let's get down to it. IHL does a lot of research on this. Uh, they did a survey last year on what uh, you know, what sales are lost because the right inventory is not on hand in retail. So anybody in this audience, some of you may, may have read this survey, but anybody in this audience know what that number is? Anyone care to take a guess? Who's brave enough to take a guess? <laughs> no? How much? A billion? Any other takers? Okay, so multiply that by a thousand. Okay, now it's interesting because when I looked at that number, I inhaled, and then I wondered what they were inhaling when they came up with that number. Uh, but it's interesting, let's break it down a little bit uh, because it's a global number, and within that, you start narrowing it down to, you know, how much of this is what's on the shelves versus what's systemically going on behind that, and that has to do with staff training and all kinds of other factors. So the area we're looking at, North America, is really a, a mere 47 billion. So this is a big problem. And it's interesting because this is what's not on the shelves when the customer wants it. There's another part to this, which is what is on the shelves is clearly crowding out what should be there. So th this, is a, th this is a big, big area. And it's not like we haven't known about this for quite a while. There are products, solutions, technology services out there that try and address this problem. And some of them do it more successfully and some of it less. But it's a tough problem. And it's a tough data problem, a tough systems problem, and it's you know, a tough analytics problem as well, and that's why it's still with us. So we've been working on a solution to this. We've been at it for several years, and we're now rolling it out, and it's based on Odoo, and the whole premise behind it is you can actually make more sales of less inventory. That's usually a nice message to deliver to your customers and prospects. Uh, and not giving away any secrets here, but a very high, at a very high level, we're making use of all the data in Odoo, clearly. There's room to make use of data that's outside Odoo, but we'll focus on that. And we automate this whole process. So we automate the process seamlessly of pulling the data from Odoo and doing analysis on it and getting it into shape for downstream processing. And once we've done the work, and we'll, we'll take a look at product classification, we'll take a look at the demand forecast, what does that look like, and then we push it back and push the results back into Odoo, and you'll see it's all very tightly integrated, which makes it a highly productive solution that's ready to go out of the box. Uh, from a business flow overview, because I'm going to try and demo parts of this very quickly to you. I can't demo all of it today. Not enough time. Um, we've got this, this automated process of classifying products, 
based on their demand characteristics, based on what we call service level, which is how much they use and how much, uh, how much money they tie up. Uh, we produce demand forecasts. We go and create overstock and understock analyses. There's a purchase planning process here which uh, lets you rapidly generate uh, purchase orders and also share them with other people and feed that back into the Odoo system. So you're going to see all of this. We're going to go through it pretty quickly. So key features, you'll see forecast and inventory analysis embedded within product views that also show you what else is going on with Odoo, the product history and so on. Uh, we optimize based on both forecasts uh, and on computed service levels, and you'll see that. And you'll see the, the purchase plan functionality that supports faster and easier and better procurement decisions uh, and how we provide visibility to you on that. So we're going to head into this demo. A lot of pieces to it. I'm going to run through it and, uh, and, and cover these these bullet points as we go along. So let me get out of that, and hopefully we can get over to do. Let's see if we can get this bigger on the screen. Uh, only a few windows open in Chrome. No, none of you ever do this, right? <laughs> Okay, so here, here we are, we're, we're logged in, we click on inventory, the usual screen, and here now what I want to show you is under the menu entries here, under operations, you'll see here and there we've, we've added. So there's an item here called, um, let's uh, make sure it's right, so that's that's reordering rules combined with the forecasting. There's a standard Odoo reordering rules functionality that we make use of as well. We build onto that. And then on the master data, there's the, the top three are classic standard Odoo functionality. And then we've added what we call demand types, service levels, and forecast groups. And all of that is critical to distinguishing between different kinds of products or SKUs that are in your inventory so that we can apply the right kind of analytics to them, the right kind of reporting and processing. And then under reporting, you'll see there's the whole smart inventory subsection here, and we'll walk through these four, understock, understock and overstock reporting, inventory dashboard, forecast review, inventory, you know, and uh, investment reporting so you can understand what's going on. So there are a few other things, but it's all very tightly integrated into Odoo, built on top of it. So let's start with this dashboard here, uh, because it's intended to be, for those who want it, an operational starting point every day or a few hours to go check on what's going on with the main KPIs. And it's split, if you like, two things on the left, one of which is, uh, your items where you're understocked. So that's where you're going to lose sales. Your items where you've probably got things sitting in inventory that you wish you'd never had. Uh, and then on the right, you've got uh, really a, a snapshot of the status of, um, in total, what you've got in inventory and uh, what you've got in order. And then we'll come back to purchase plans. We can click on that. But you could look at the most heavily used stock items. And we show you here the top few. But you click on here, and you get to see a bigger view. And you could drill down from there if you want to. But the whole idea here is that you, uh, you get the main KPIs. There are obviously lots of potential KPIs with inventory. But you see the main ones here. And it helps you to keep an eye on things. And you could navigate from here to the areas where you need to actually do some work. Uh, so that's the, the idea behind the dashboard. Then from there, uh, we're going to go over to, actually what we do is under the master data, we're going to go over to the, uh, 
uh, product variety, product variants, which you're used to. And within that, let's uh, narrow down the field here for demo purposes. And we've got a few items here, and you'll see that we've got some that are we call demo under, where we're understocked, we're in danger of being out of stock. We've got some uh, items here which we've called insufficient. And what we mean by insufficient is insufficient data. And that's the question that always comes up, is how much data do you need to make something like this work? Well, we want to take that pain off your hands and just recognize that's a reality of everybody's data. It's insufficient because it's new product. It's insufficient because the record keeping isn't what it should be. There's a whole range of reasons. But we, again, our system identifies that and doesn't try and apply algorithms that should never go anywhere near that data. Uh, and then we have uh, some uh, normal, call it products within the normal inventory range that you've set and then ones where we're overstocked. So if we, we take a look at uh, something where maybe we're overstocked right now. Um, so this is one of, those, uh, one of those units. I don't know why we're getting a small screen, but hopefully you can see enough here. Uh, so you can see here that we're 78 days overstocked supposedly based on past orders and so on. And we can see here that we have on the left-hand side, the blue is history, and the right-hand side is what our algorithms are saying you should order or not order, or what the, what the demand's going to be. And from that, then, you're going to make some orders. So if we, uh, so we're looking at this, and we, we're seeing here that we actually are about to place an order or we might place an order here. Is that passed? That's probably passed. I suspect, but you can have a look at that. But uh, certainly, you know, if we want to if we want to change our forecast here so that we don't order some more, we can hit the edit button and then move down here and change and and change make an adjustment and. Uh, Let's say for this one, we want to go, we want to go down 50%, and then somewhere else maybe we'll up it 80%. I want to show you this because, you know, the display should now change to reflect that, uh, which it has, uh, and that then feeds on downstream into potential ordering processes and so on. So. Um, that's, and the other thing about this is that we're embedding the view for you inside the existing data from Odoo, and you can see what's gone on historically with it and so on. So that's one way of handling a single product, but we really need to look at how you handle lots and lots of products at a time. So let's go at this point to, uh, uh, back to, well, it's actually what we're doing here is we, we, we're getting into the smart inventory section here. And first thing we're going to do is look at the forecast review. Uh, and for instance, if we uh, in here, you can see that we handle multiple locations for inventory. So we've chosen a location. And then you have the option of what your forecast characteristic or time horizon is. Do you want it to be? a monthly view, a weekly view, and so on. And that gives you, if I update that, uh, then you know I've got a lot of products in here, which is fine, but it's more than maybe I want to work with initially. So I've got the ability of filtering things down, and particularly, for instance, looking at lead time and saying I want only to look at products with a lead time that are greater than, let's say, Let's get this out of here. Let's say it's 10 days. OK, and then update. And that takes me down to shows me that there are seven products like that. Uh, what happened? Last time I saw this, 
It was because the net, the internet connectivity went down. Oh, there it is. It's okay. It's back. Okay, so we're down to seven records, but actually you can only see three. The reason for that is those are the three that have a monthly time horizon. The others have different time horizons. But that lets you review your forecast you know, in a, in a systematic way and decide what you're going to move on and what you're not going to move on and so on. Um, and then uh, let me just check. I've got my cheat sheet here. Make sure I'm not leaving anything. Well, I could just depending on how I'm doing on time. Uh, where am I? I want to get rid of this. There I go. So I can update again, go to the full view, and I can make adjustments here to, uh, to the forecast manually. Again, I can always override. This is critical. AI and machine learning is wonderful. It's certainly not infallible. So we've, you know, we allow people to make all kinds of changes based on upcoming uh, inventories and so on. The other thing is, with your forecast here, the bottom here, you've got an option to export this to Excel, which you can do to share with other people in the organization, make sure that everything's working out okay. How are we doing on time? Getting close to 12 minutes, okay. So I'm gonna go fast here on the remaining ones. There's an investment report. Uh, I can adjust that too, but it tells you, based on your current purchasing over the next four, for the next four months, how much you're like, how much you're committed to spending. It gives you an overall budget, uh, constraint view, and so on. And you could change your your periods, and again go back and change your filtering characteristics for that. And then we've got an overstock understock report here. Uh, so four categories: understock items, overstocked items items that are getting close to reordering points, if you want to look at that, items that are at the right level for now. And again, with any of these, um, you could decide that uh, you need to create a purchase plan. So this is part of the purchase planning process. And then you, you could select all of them, which is probably overkill. You select a few, and you say add to purchase plan. And this is going to tell you um, this is okay, it's gonna update the, the, the reorder points automatically, which is probably a good thing. And then in here you can see that uh, we've got one item here with nothing on the order quantity, so let's edit that. Well, let's, we can highlight it and see a little bit more of its history. But if I now edit and then go in and change, if I click on this, you'll see start seeing that there's several vendors that you could choose from as well, which you might want to do based on lead time or cost, but we'll change that to 10 units, say, for now. And then we'll uh, uh, we will load the products. And once, okay, hit the wrong button here. Just wait for that. And we might wait and wait. Okay, we went back to the previous ones. I wanted to show you how you can generate requests for quotes and the options you have there to do it by vendor, by location, by single RFQ for each product, and you have all those capabilities. Um, the other items I have here, which we're running out of time, I'm not gonna get into for now is how we classify, well, look at it briefly, how we classify different kinds of products. So systematically, we say that there's a limited number of products, but they have characteristics where demand changes are smooth, demands changes are, demand is intermittent, it's lumpy. So there's, there's a taxonomy for that. And then on top of that, we lay, we overlay that with, um, how, how expensive they are in terms of inventory levels and what sort of service level we want attached to each of those. Uh, and then we can also get into 
reordering rules. So you'll see here that each product, some of them have reordering rules, some don't. Uh, again, I can narrow the scope down here and say, well, you know, I don't have a reordering rule for this. Um, let's see what we can, and, and this gives you an ability to, uh, where am I? Automatically recalculate that, uh, for which I'm going to need some help to go do that. But, uh, so that's a quick view of the product. You can see there's a lot in there. We tried to integrate it with Odoo to make it easy to use and manage your inventory accordingly. Uh, and I think, hopefully, we've given you a taste at least of all of these aspects uh, of the product and the different pieces of functionality in that. And with that, I'll draw my presentation to a close and open up for any questions. May you want to? You may want to be ready for this. So, in, in your examples, all your uh, inventory was all finished goods. But if you were in a manufacturing setting where you have like thousands of parts that feed, you have to assemble into a a good. Does it track that, and how does that work in that setting? Into a sort of bill of materials situation. Yeah. Okay. How or high do you want to uh, jump in on that? Just. Uh, hello. Yeah, thanks for your question. So I think it's a very good question. Uh, regarding, um, so uh, for sure that for the manufacturing, so uh, you need to be able to handle a lot of raw materials. Uh, so for this, so with that one, I think our product can uh, still can be able to handle that because uh, we are trying for the uh, first, for the demand forecasting, you're able to, uh, we have the forecast engine at the back end. Uh, can automatically generate the demand forecast for each of the raw material based on the, the demand of the material, not based on the uh, uh, the bomb, the uh, the BOM, or other um, things related to the manufacturer itself, but based on the demand of the raw material. So, and another thing is after you have the demand for the raw materials, so you can, uh, so if, uh, if you see at near the, at the end of the demo, so David showed several, uh, we have the analysis where we can say like the demand uh, understock and overstock analysis. So in that say, so it's actually that report is for the future, for the near future. So it's uh, based on the, the, the forecast generated for your raw materials. So you can see like, okay, uh, if it's uh, uh, at this right, it, it is the right time for you to purchase more for some of the raw materials or, it's, uh, or you are good with uh, this amount of the raw material in your inventory. So and with that, we have the, uh, if, uh, David, can you please go back to our demo where we have the sure. understock and overstock analysis? Sure. Let's try and do okay. that. Uh, okay, so I think that's here. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you... Uh, no, that is for the purchase plan. Can you go to the reporting and go to understock and overstock analysis? Yeah. All right, so from here you see that do we have a, a button on the, uh, on the left, uh, on, on, on the right corner, create purchase plan. And with that, create purchase plan is going to automatically pick up all of the products with the understock risk. And you, and you can choose if you have a lot of raw materials here. So you can just click on the checkbox on the top uh, there and the system going to automatically uh, choose all of the products and put all of these products into a purchase plan for you. And with that purchase plan, within the purchase plan, the system even do uh, uh, um, uh, give you a better reference guidance for your procurement, uh, which is like uh, it's gonna uh, recommend the order quantities. So how much, uh, how, uh, what quantity you should order for this raw material for and for that material? Everything is uh, automatic. 
Uh, so and uh, yeah, so like if you have a lot of raw material, I don't think that uh, it's going to be a problem with our system. Hi, is the demand forecast an input into the system or an output? Like, how, at what point do you draw the line? Where, how, how far out do you need to be forecasting for the tool to work? Or is it building the forecast based off of all the AI that's being done in historical? Hey. Okay, I'll have high contradict me, but uh, it, is, it is built off of the data that's in the system, but it also allows you to, apart from manually override, there's options to to import, say from Excel, a list of, uh, you know, a, a set of forecasts for specific products. Is that about right? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Let's say. Hi. Uh, just a question on the dashboard. Uh, in previous versions, you have to update the page to actually see the updates that were generated. For example, when a, a purchase order pushes through and the inventory needs to dispense products, then you have to actually see, not, not that not, part. Not that one. Okay. So. Go to the overview. Um, so, did you mean uh, let's have a look. Where the what? the locations are. Okay, so this may be. Oh, where the look? Yeah, where the locations are. Then we probably want. Let's go back here because this is where you can. Where well, it's choose. more of the dashboard where um, you see all the locations and what work needs to be done. Um, what products needs to be dispensed, for example. Just click on inventory. Okay. Uh, wait a second. Well, it's probably overview, right? Ah, there we go. That page, usually you need to refresh the page just to see the processes that need um, to get done. Is, mm -hmm. is that something that can automatically refresh? So you can put it like on a board to see what work needs to get done. Good, okay, good question. Hi. The, un the answer is it refreshes? Okay. Anybody else before lunch? If not, thank you very much, appreciate it.